Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be looking at Garmin's new Panoptics Live Scope system. I've taken a look at the Panoptics before, um, but what they've done is they've changed it up a little bit. And let me just explain to you what they've done with this new Live Scope system. And probably the best way to do that is to compare traditional sonar with clear view sonar. Traditional sonar gives us very good arches, but clear view gives us really good bottom definition. And that's what we had with the original Panoptics. It was this style sonar. Now with Live Scope, it's going to be this style sonar. So here's a, another example. This is like a PS21 or 22 forward looking. And then this here is the new live scope. Very different, much more detail in these. You can see the fish in much greater detail as they swim. So that's the main difference between the two. Now there's a lot of videos out there on what, uh, what you can do with the new live scope system. So I'm not gonna get into too much detail on the cool things that you can see. Um, what I wanted to get into was more the settings and the features in the unit and how to set it up and different things you can do with it because I haven't seen a lot of that on YouTube yet. So let's get into that. Okay, so first thing, let's just orient ourselves with the screen. We've got a grid across the top and across the bottom uh, or across the side here. This is our depth where we would hit the bottom here just a little bit around 40 feet and then we're out in this case to about 70 feet. We can increase our range and that's the maximum that we can go in this particular recording and then also decrease the range to see more detail. Now our boat is situated right here at the zero. So it does look a little bit behind and below and then out forward. So this is the first view you're gonna get with the live scope. We can go into the menu, into our sonar setup and installation, and then we have orientation. We can change that to down. Now in doing that, we also have to rotate the transducer. So the transducer has two elements in it that'll allow you to look forward or down. You need to pull the trolling motor out of the water, physically rotate the transducer and make the selection in the menu um, if it doesn't automatically do it for you. So now in this view, our boat is here. Again, we've got a grid going each way so we can look left and right. Um, and then down as well and see fish swimming around us. So those are the two modes you would use. Um, forward looking obviously to look ahead of the boat, um, find structure, weed clumps, uh, rock piles, that type of stuff. And then this view here would be used much more when you're vertically jigging. So maybe fishing for smallmouth bass, drop shotting, vertically jigging walleye, that type of thing. Okay, so we're back into our forward orientation. And just to show you what we're looking at on the screen so you get an idea, we've got some standing trees here school of fish right here. You can see them disappearing as they swim off. Another school coming in here and down here as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at and it's all live real time. So we go into our menu. First option in the menu is our gain. We have an auto low, auto medium and auto high. So you can set those as the unit sees fit. If you want to see more detail, you set to auto high. If you just you know really care about seeing um, larger targets, set it to auto low. You can also then control this manually and set this however you like. And just like any sonar, as you go up, you're going to get more clutter. Um, auto medium is probably a good starting point when you first get your unit to play around with it. Next thing in the menu you're going to notice is the depth range. And again, that's just like any sonar. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. We can increase or decrease the depth range and then it's also available in auto. Now the benefit in this, if you, if you just want to keep a um, close eye on the bottom, like especially in the down view, you know, this will be helpful because you can maximize your screen um, to get the most detail. And then we also have forward range. Again, that's just like what we would have the depth range, but looking forward and again, auto setting there as well. Transmit, we can turn it on or off. So if you want to disable the sonar, just by hitting the menu, you can go uh, turn it on or off. So this will be great when you pull the trolling motor out of the water, just disable the sonar. When you run to your next spot, come back, turn it back on. So that's your first page of, of just basic things. Now into the sonar setup, we get a little bit more into detail. Appearance is the first thing, and first thing we have in there is our color scheme. So amber is the default, what we're looking at now. Copper, black emerald, midnight blue, orange crawfish, red shad, blue, yellow, and that is it. I'm just gonna put it back to amber for now. We also have color gain in here. So this is just like on your sonar, you can increase that or decrease that and you'll see it come up. So as targets are, are harder and larger, you will see the bottom or like the bottom or the fish, the, the brush, whatever it may be, be a little bit more intense in color. And then you can also go back to your default. Now to me, that default's a little low. I would probably wanna have it set a little bit higher there. Okay, so trails, I'm just gonna skip for a second. Um, I wanna come back to that in greater detail. Bottom fill is just a simple toggle on or off and that'll just fill in our bottom here 
Um, so anything above the bottom, like these trees or fish, um, will show up in, in a little bit better detail. You won't get uh, you know, confused with what the true bottom is. There it is on, and I'm just gonna leave it off. Um, the grid system we can turn on or off as well. Um, it's nice if you do wanna see how far a target is away. It does help with that but I personally like it off just because it gives you just a little bit clearer image of the whole underwater world and, and what's going on. I am gonna just leave it on for this demo just because I wanna probably reference you know, how far away things are at some points. So our scroll history as well, what that is is this um, little bar here. It's like a traditional down looking clear view and that's just the history of, of what's gone on. Um, downside to having that on is you do lose screen real estate. Your, your panoptics is now shrunk uh, now we can take full advantage of, of the whole screen when we have that off. So I would probably recommend turning that off. And if you did want to have something, maybe just your traditional fish finder or the clear view sonar would be a better choice to have in there. Okay, so I've switched over to the down view. And what I want to do is talk about these trails now. So I'm going to turn them on and you, can, you have different options here, slow, medium, fast. Um, so I put it on slow and basically what they are is trails for how the targets are moving and I think it just shows best in here. One thing I will recommend you do though is if you are going to use this feature, change your, um, your color scheme to the blue. What that does is changes the trails to the um, magenta color there, makes it a lot easier to, uh, to see and understand. And also I'm going to just turn that gain down a little bit just so you can kind of get an idea of these trails and, and what they're doing so for instance we'll just pick a, a target maybe moving in here you can see this one here just slowly moving in and leaves a trail so as they go it'll leave a trail now the downside to it is the bottom leaves a trail as well so you can see that it, it was up higher and now it's gone down now i did have this set to slow slow i'm going to change them to medium um, just because it does look a little bit better you can see they're still on there when they're set to slow um, so when you have it on medium, they do update a little bit quicker and uh, I found that's uh, a little bit better um, just for, for following the fish. Now, this is really going to be good and useful when you're vertically fishing. So you drop a drop shot down and you can see that drop shot, see what you've done with it, um, you know, either lifting it up or dropping it down and then see how that fish is coming to it. So you'll see a streak. So here's a perfect example of it. See that fish streaking? Just like that. So that's the type of stuff you're going to see. Fast or medium would be best. Uh, slow, I don't think you're you're really ever gonna use it on slow. Back into our menu here. Um, that's basically everything in the appearance menu. So we'll get back out of there. Uh, noise rejection, we have that. If you're getting electrical interference, we've got a off, and low, medium, and high. So you can set that however you see. Uh, we've got TVG control here as well. Um, again, low, medium, and high. So basic you know, fish finder features are in this as well. Um, our overlay data. You know, we can turn on or off. So whatever you want to see, you know, if you want to see how deep it is and that's it, you can do that. And you want to keep an eye on the time, you can do that as well. So you can customize that a little bit in there. Into our installation menu, this is where we go a little bit uh, deeper in. We have a depth offset, so the install depth. You can go in and change that to, you know, whatever it is. So if it's at 1.5 feet down, you can do that. And then we'll have a depth, depth ops, offset of that. Um, the reason they have that is these are designed to be installed on a trolling motor. So the trolling motor is going to be lower in the water um, than the actual surface. So you can offset for that. Use AHRS, Attitude Heading Reference Sensor is what that is. And that's an internal compass. Um, so you can turn that on or off. Um, and then that will, as you can see, vary the positioning of it. Now, if you're using this on the barrel of a trolling motor, um, you cannot use the compass, so you have to turn it off, and then you would basically manually adjust the pitch um, to whatever you would see fit, so kind of like this. In my experience with the PS21 transducer, I found you, turning this off was much better, um, and just using it on its own on a, on a barrel or a shaft mount on the trolling motor, but that's, it's kind of up to you. Whatever, whatever you want to do doesn't really make a difference. Um, the compass, you know, just basically automatically telling you what direction or, or what angle it's at. I personally like to set things up manually just because I have more control that way. So that's why I turn it off. Okay, and then you have a compass calibration in here. Turn the boat uh, time and a half in either direction. You just basically have to keep the, um, the boat steady when you do this. Just basically follow those instructions there and the trolling motor needs to be deployed. Orientation we've already gone through. Uh, focus here. This is uh, something that uh, is 
is kind of unique um, here. What it is designed to do is uh, help you if you're in fresh or salt water because the salinity in salt water will um, you know, affect the echo. So we can go to auto salt and then that will just clean up your picture if you're noticing it um, being a little cluttered or auto fresh. Um, it, you can also control manually here as well. Now I haven't really seen too much of a difference of what this scale does in the demo. So it would be interesting to play with on the water and see. Um, but basically it's just adjusting your gain settings based on clarity and salinity in the water. Probably not something most people need to mess with, but it is there if you are having issues with a lot of clutter on your screen. And our last option is restore sonar defaults. So if you've you know played around with this, you don't like what you've done, you can just go right back to the factory defaults. Now just back to this AHRS, if you turn it off, we've already talked about pitch angle, you can also do flipped here. So it can go on or off. So that'll just um, adjust how your, your screen is being displayed if you need to. So really with this, the main thing you're gonna be adjusting in here is your gain if you wanna play with that. But other than that, that's really about it. The auto depth range works really well. Again, you can play with that and you do have control of that right on the screen. So you don't even need to go into the menu there, which is nice. The only thing you have to go a little bit deeper into the menu for is your color gain, which is, is one thing I, I wish Garmin would put a little bit um, closer up in the menu so we didn't have to go in as deep. But once you get your color picked, um, amber is probably gonna be the most popular, copper as well. Um, you can adjust that gain and, and kind of go from there. Okay, now in our down looking, um, I find these colors I, I don't like near as much. So what I've done in there, been playing around with is the blue. I really like that blue. Um, the yellow is one I've, I've been a fan of on the older style pan optics but I don't think I'll be, be using that too, too much. Um, the blue is gonna be really good when you're vertically fishing. That's where it's gonna excel. Um, it gives you that high detail image, but just very easy to see. Now, if you wanna see bottom structure and like get those really good um, quality images of fish swimming down below you, that's when you're probably gonna to wanna to go to one of these uh, more grainy colors like the amber, the copper, um, or even the midnight blue. So in the down viewing mode, our menus are identical. Uh, only thing that's different is installation. We have roll angle when our AHRS sensor is off and that just allows you to compensate if your transducer is angled a little bit. So zero is probably where you're gonna wanna keep it unless you have a, a unique install to your boat. So those are the main functions and features of the Panoptics Live Scope system. Uh, it's really, really cool as you can see just how detailed it is seeing these fish swimming around. And no doubt you've already seen some of the other videos where you can see the tarpon swimming and you basically see, see the tail wagging as the fish is moving. It's, it's really amazing technology what Garmin has here with this. Now to install this on your boat, first thing you need to do is update the software of your unit. This is a 7608 XSV, um, so I've updated that. It does require a module, um, so it's no longer just a direct connect through the Garmin Marine Network port. There is a module which will require power as well and then your Panoptics transducer will plug into that. There's no longer an RJ45 ethernet connector on it either. There's a smaller Garmin Marine Network connector now. The idea behind that is to let you fish it through the boat easier rather than that big RJ45 connector. So that's one thing they've changed, but it then adapts to an RJ45 to go into the back of the unit. And when I say RJ45, that's just like a standard ethernet connector. Obviously Garmin's are waterproof. It's not like one you'd plug into your computer, but uh, it's that same style connector. So this is really designed to be used on a trolling motor mount um, and best suited on a uh, cable steer trolling motor like a Minn Kota Altrax, a Fortrax, a Maxim, Motor Guide Tour Edition, or their X5 models. You can also use it on models like a Tarova, um, Altera, anything like that, like the Power Steer models or Motor Guide XI5. The only downside there is again, you know, we don't, anything on those, the transducer can't be zip tied to the shaft very easily because the whole shaft of the trolling motor slides through the, the mount. So um, you just have to be very careful with your, with your cable running if you're gonna be using it on those trolling motors. There is a transom mount also included with this. Um, the only thing to know there, it's really designed to be mounted on a trolling motor. Um, so the transom mount's designed for very low speed use you'd probably want to mount that on your transom in an area that you could um, rotate it up very easily when your boat's on plane, especially for higher speed boats. Guys, thanks for checking this out. I hope uh, this goes in a little bit deeper than just uh, what uh, you've seen in some other videos on how to set this up, how to use this, and uh, just the different features of it. Garmin's done a great job with this. Uh, it looks amazing, this technology, and I hope you guys really like it when you get to try it out on the water. 
Um, I'm going to leave you with a couple videos of the um, Panoptix PS21 so you can take a look at that and then also software upgrades if you need to do that. Please like and subscribe. Really appreciate your support.